And hello, this is Eamon O'Brien. You're so welcome to the Reluctant Speakers Club Expert Series. And coming up today, we're going to talk about why it really pays for you to think beyond your own borders to maybe expand your learning and your connections as you become a more expert speaker. And I am delighted to have somebody who is truly international, just especially for this occasion, all the way from Holland. It is Froa Schotemaker. And Froa is uh, somebody who actually possesses secrets for better presentations, is a bit of a whiz on PowerPoint, is a trainer of trainers, a speaker, and now the president of PSA, which is Professional Speaking Association Holland. Froa, delighted that you're here. Thank you. <laughs> well, so we had a great chat last weekend in Nottingham, where the Professional Speaking Association, which is a group of expert speakers who are paid to speak, got together to connect. And we were talking about your experiences in having experimented in going to overseas locations and learning from other speakers. But yeah. before I delve into that, can we start with maybe telling people a little bit about your experiences as a speaker. How did you become a professional speaker? I start as a trainer. Uh -huh. And I start with uh, the different trainings about communication and uh, how to learn. So that was my start. And then people ask me, can you also give a presentation? So I am a trainer and I am a presenter. And uh, yeah, people can ask me, is there, uh, we, we like to change something in our organization, how can we do that? And sometimes I use a training, sometimes I use a workshop, sometimes I use a presentation to reach their goals. Yes, and then you found by chance or by invitation the Professional Speaking Association. So tell me about that and what, what, what did that do for you as a speaker? Uh, because I have a business for my own, uh, then it's, it's very interesting to have connections. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, someone invited me to PSO Holland to an uh, event and I was there and I thought, yes, this is a good uh, place to be. And directly, I went also to a convention of the NSA, the National Speakers Association in America. Yes. It was my first, first big event there in San Diego. And then I realized what a great place to be because it's all about sharing information. Yes. And uh, when you are a member of an association with speakers, People are going, coming all over the world to share their expertise and they do it for free because you are also a speaker and I love it. Isn't it amazing? It just, doesn't it really help to open doors? Yes, yes. So at this moment, for example, I have a mastermind group. Yes. With, uh, uh, an Englishman, he is uh, living in France. Okay. And uh, David Orchard. Yes. And also with uh, René Lee Rosenberg, and she is living in New York. And I love to have an international mastermind group. And I was never able to have a group like this when I was not going to a convention abroad. Yes. Well, and tell me a little bit about this, because I also met you over in Britain recently in Nottingham. So between going to America and, and we'll talk about your, 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 your experiences in speaking in other countries in a moment, but America and Britain and, and now maybe uh, looking further afield, what important lessons do you think you've picked up that you're, you're delighted that you've put into your array of things that you know? When I was at the convention, the NSA convention in New York, yes. I found the book Teaching with the Brain and Mind. And I, teaching with the Brain and Mind, I love it and because I'm an educational specialist. Yes. And then I realized, wow, what about speaking with the Brain and Mind? Yes. 
So I thought, okay, how can we deliver a presentation that is totally in alignment with the brain of our uh, audience? And then I thought, okay, now I am connected to so many speakers, I will ask them some questions. Yes. And I give it a try because you never know. Perhaps the connection is all only during the convention. Yes. Perhaps it's a stronger connection. So I wrote uh, different speakers all over the world and I sent them three questions. And uh, much uh, of a lot of uh, speakers give me their answers. And then I realized, yes, it's stronger this connection than only when you meet at a convention. And then I make my presentation speaking with the brain in mind. And I still use the information of my, uh, what I learned uh, at the convention in, uh, in New York. Yes. That I make, uh, yeah, uh, that I ask some questions uh, to other speakers. Yeah. Uh, because my topic is now a special PowerPoint, powerful PowerPoint. And because I am traveling all over the world, I meet very interesting experts about PowerPoint, like Mike Robertson. Sure. And uh, I interview them. And then I, I'm writing blogs about the interviews. And for me, this is a great value for my business. Yeah, so, so obviously you've, you've got a lot out of that. Has it encouraged you to try to, to see if you could find ways to speak overseas or in other countries more regularly? Um, for years I thought, no, I only want to speak in the Netherlands. Yes. Because it's easier for me. Of course. And um, now I am thinking about perhaps I want to speak abroad also. So uh, my blogs will be uh, in English and in Dutch. Yes. And I will uh, have my website in uh, English and Dutch too. Yes. So, because I love the, the, the atmosphere abroad. And uh, yes, I, I will give it a try. But for me, it's something new to think about that perhaps I will also speak uh, not only in the Netherlands, but also abroad. Yes, which is a great uh, learning experience. And in all fairness, you, you have terrific English. But I think oftentimes when people uh, are considering the, the prospect of speaking in a language that's not their own, that can really feel like it's quite a challenge. It is. Yeah. Uh, what about culturally? What are your thoughts about that? The, 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 uh, the, the challenges you think you might face in trying to speak to an English speaking audience? Yes. For me, I prefer not an English speaking uh, audience. Of course, English speaking, but not the first language. Ah, okay. <laughs> I prefer people who are uh, have, like me. Uh, English as a second language. <laughs> yeah, that's much fairer. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yes, yes. Uh, it's interesting. Um, some people love the word collaboration. Yes. When I was young uh, and I learned about history, collaboration was not a very nice word. Oh, okay. It's uh, collaboration I learned when I was young. It is only about um, uh, Dutch people working together with the enemy. Oh, I see. So really it was collaborating with people so that maybe life wouldn't be quite so bad. Yes. So now after years, I understand very well, very well. That is a very good word. But this is one of the culture problems you can have. Yes, no, absolutely that. And, and I think, you know, the, the thing is that in, in terms of making what you have to say more interesting on a global basis, having opportunities to speak overseas is terrific. And I kind of want to go back to what you said about, you know, the connections that you can make when you do, do go to speak with other professionals, they will help you. Yes, yes. And I, I learned when you want to speak or 
uh, in your own country or abroad, you need other people to help you. Yeah. It's very important. Yes. Yeah, uh, no, perhaps a, a personal assistant, a virtual assistant, a uh, speaking coach. Uh, now I hire someone to uh, translate my blogs in good English. Yes, good idea. <laughs> Because don't think that you can do everything very, very good. No, you're you absolutely help. right. You need help. Yeah. That It, I've learned. That yeah. I, I learned from other speakers too. Yes, no, I think you're 100% right. Well, listen, um, uh, it, it's an interesting conversation and we, we are only touching, if you like, the very, very top of this topic, like the tip of an iceberg. Yeah. Before I let you go, maybe uh, you could share one piece of advice, something that you now know about better speaking that you wish you knew when you started. What would that be? Speaking, it's all about the audience. Yes. So how, how can you reach it that uh, they take away the things you really love? So it's also about PowerPoints. Some people uh, using the PowerPoints only for themselves. So uh, they can uh, read the information. Yes. Not more in that way, yes. But it's all about the audience. And uh, what can you do? So you can deliver a great speech and they take so many with them when they are going home. Yeah. And for me, a, a new thing is uh, when you are a speaker, uh, normally people ask me, oh, please, can you help us with this? And can you do that? But now I have my new topic, PowerPoint. So I have to do some marketing. Yes. And the marketing part is also very important. Yes. And what, what I like uh, on Facebook, when I see another uh, speaker and he's sharing information, I share it too. Yes. So uh, I hope all the time he will share my information. So that's beautiful. When you are speakers, you can help each other with the marketing part in that way. I think yeah. so. Yeah, and I think maybe that's a great note on which to end because there's no doubt that other people within the expert community, if you ask them, they're only too happy. To yes. Attend. And, yes. Uh, and, they, and they really will. What I love is the atmosphere between speakers. Uh, they are not afraid that you are taking away their business. No, no. And in fact, if you check out my very last um, uh, uh, blog, which came out actually today, but when this comes out, obviously, it will be out <laughs> for a little while. Um, it's all about how to get booked as a speaker and yeah. it's all about sharing from another fellow professional speaker. And so, yes, people will give you great advice. Yes, it's amazing. And now you are interviewing me after MEGA, the convention in Nottingham. Fantastic. Yes. Um, the, in, in Germany, they asked me, for, okay, can you speak in uh, Germany, in English? For me, I, I can give it a try because it's the second language. Yes. And uh, another person asked me, okay, can you help me with a big event for online marketing? And it's fantastic. Of course. And the next step is to come to Ireland. Just bring an umbrella with you. I love Ireland. Good. <laughs> I really love it. So when you invite me, I will come. <laughs> yes, of course. We, we, we'll, make, we'll make it a date. Well, listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And also, to all of those who watched today, thank you for engaging. And until the next time, here's to awesome speaking.